Have you ever paused to consider the importance of social and economic justice in your workplace? Our workplaces are more than just physical spaces where we clock in and clock out. They're vibrant hubs where ideas are born, friendships are formed, and where our personal growth intertwines with the progress of society. But for this to happen, it's crucial that our workplaces are founded on the principles of social and economic justice. These principles ensure that everyone has an equal shot at success regardless of their background, and that the fruits of their labour are fairly rewarded. They also promote a culture of respect and dignity, where each worker is valued not just for their output, but for their inherent worth as a human being. At the heart of these principles are international labour standards, which act as the global rulebook for fairness and dignity in the workplace. Understanding this, we can appreciate the essential role of the International Labour Organization, ILO. Or rewind to October 1919, the League of Nations founds one of the first and oldest specialized UN agencies, the ILO. The story of the International Labour Organization begins in the aftermath of the First World War, a time when the world was desperately seeking a new order. The League of Nations, the precursor to the United Nations, recognized the need for a body dedicated to promoting social and economic justice. Thus, the ILO was born. From its inception, the ILO had a lofty mandate to advance social justice and promote decent work by setting international labour standards. An ambitious goal, but one that the founders of the ILO believed was essential for peace and prosperity. The ILO started with a handful of member states, but its influence quickly grew. Today, it boasts a membership of 187 nations, including all but seven of the United Nations member states. The Cook Islands, though not a UN member, also counts itself among the ILO's ranks. Headquartered in the serene city of Geneva, Switzerland, the ILO's reach extends far beyond its tranquil home. Approximately 40 field offices scattered across the globe, from bustling metropolises to remote islands, serve as the ILO's eyes, ears and hands on the ground. These offices, manned by over 3,000 staff hailing from over 100 nations, work tirelessly to uphold the ILO's mandate. The ILO staff includes a significant number of technical cooperation specialists. These individuals play a crucial role in the ILO's mission, working hand in hand with governments, employers and workers to implement the ILO's standards and principles. Today, the ILO stands as a testament to the enduring importance of its mission. Despite being founded under the League of Nations, an organisation that no longer exists, the ILO has not only survived, but thrived. It has adapted to changing times, evolving labour markets and shifting political landscapes. The ILO, though established in a different era, continues to be relevant and vital in our time. Its story is one of resilience, adaptability and an unwavering commitment to social and economic justice. At the heart of the ILO's mandate is the promotion of accessible, productive and sustainable work worldwide. This mandate is not just a lofty ideal, it is a commitment that is enshrined in a set of international labour standards. These standards are the nuts and bolts of the ILO's mission, constructed over a century of tireless work and dedication. Imagine, if you will, a vast body of rules and guidelines encompassing 189 conventions and treaties. These are not mere pieces of paper, but powerful tools that guide countries in crafting their labour laws and policies. They cover everything from working hours to the rights of seafarers, from the protection of workers' health to the prevention of employment discrimination. Yet among all these conventions, eight stand tall as the pillars of the ILO's mandate. These are the fundamental principles and rights at work, principles so essential that they are applicable to every person in every country, regardless of the level of economic development. They include the freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining. The ILO is a unique organisation within the UN system thanks to its tripartite structure. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, let's break it down. In most international organisations, you'll find that the decision-making process is typically dominated by governments. But the ILO breaks the mould by incorporating representatives from not just governments, but also employers and workers into its framework. 
This tripartite structure ensures that all voices are heard, giving each a seat at the table to discuss, debate, and ultimately decide on policies and programs. So, how does this structure function in practice? The ILO operates through three main bodies that each play a crucial role. First up, we have the International Labour Conference. This is where the magic happens. It convenes annually, bringing together delegates from the ILO's 187 member states. Here, they formulate international labour standards, addressing a myriad of work-related issues and paving the way for social and economic justice in workplaces worldwide. Next, we have the governing body. Think of it as the ILO's Executive Council. It's responsible for deciding the agency's policy and budget. This body ensures that the ILO's mission stays on track, providing the strategic direction needed to navigate the complex landscape of the world's labour markets. Lastly, but certainly not least, we have the International Labour Office. This is the permanent secretariat that administers the organisation. It's the engine room, implementing the activities and programmes decided upon by the other two bodies. Under the leadership of the Director General, the office keeps the wheels of the ILO turning, reaching out to workplaces in every corner of the globe. This tripartite structure of the ILO, where governments, employers and workers each have a voice, is truly unique. It's a testament to the power of collaboration and dialogue, ensuring that decisions made are balanced and fair. And that, my friends, is the beauty of the ILO. This unique structure ensures balanced representation and decision-making, promoting social dialogue and consensus. The ILO's impact on the world stage is undeniable. The organization's tireless efforts to advance social and economic justice have led to remarkable achievements. In 1969, the ILO was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, a testament to its contribution in fostering fraternity and peace among nations. This prestigious recognition underscored the ILO's commitment to ensuring decent work and justice for workers across the globe and its dedication to providing technical assistance to developing nations. In 2019, a century after its inception, the ILO convened the Global Commission on the Future of Work. This initiative went beyond the present, looking ahead to the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century labour environment. The Commission's report made 10 recommendations, including a universal labour guarantee, social protection from birth to old age, and an entitlement to lifelong learning. These ambitious goals reflect the ILO's continued commitment to evolving with the times and addressing the changing needs of the global workforce. However, the journey of the ILO has not been without its challenges. As we move further into the 21st century, the labour environment continues to undergo significant transformations. Rapid technological advancements, evolving economic structures and pressing issues such as climate change and inequality present complex challenges. For instance, the rise of the gig economy poses questions about workers' rights and protections, while automation threatens job security in various sectors. Moreover, the ILO's unique tripartite structure, while a strength, also presents its own set of challenges. Achieving consensus among governments, employers and workers can be a complex and lengthy process. Balancing the diverse interests of these stakeholders is a delicate act, requiring careful negotiation and diplomacy. Despite these challenges, the ILO continues to strive for a world where everyone has access to decent and sustainable work. The organization remains steadfast in its mission, adapting its strategies to meet the evolving demands of the global labor environment. The ILO's work is far from done, but its legacy of dedication and resilience provides a strong foundation for the journey ahead. The ILO's mission aligns with the broader objectives of the United Nations. The organization's keen focus on international development positions it as an integral part of the United Nations Development Group. The group's collective efforts are aimed at achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, a global blueprint for a more equitable and sustainable future. The ILO's mandate to ensure accessible, productive and sustainable work carried out in conditions of freedom, equity, security and dignity resonates deeply with these goals. Their standards and conventions are not just about safeguarding workers' rights. They're about shaping a global labour environment 
that is conducive to sustainable development, that empowers individuals and that builds resilient societies. Whether it's through the elimination of child labour, ensuring the right to collective bargaining or promoting gender equality in the workplace, each of the ILO's initiatives contributes significantly to this global pursuit. The ILO, in its quest for social and economic justice, contributes profoundly to the global pursuit of sustainable development.